guys, it's Lynn here. Hope everyone is having an amazing day. Now guys, in this video, as you can see here, I have my Lophophora diffusa um, cactus plant, not looking too good, as you can see here. Now, um, this Lophophora diffusa obviously is a form of Lophophora. Now, Lophophora, there's a few varieties. Um, the most common one is known, obviously, as Lophophora williamsii. And uh, links up above to a video I've made on how to care for Lophophora. It's the same with all the different types of varieties, as there seem to be a lot more around now of different types than there used to be. Now, this is a diffuser, diffuser type. We should have normally little tiny, tiny little white flowers. It's never flowered for me yet. And it's sort of been a little bit troublesome ever since I've had this plant. Now, I've had this plant for absolutely years, possibly about... I think about over 20 years anyway and when I actually bought it I bought it on the internet from a um, from a cactus website I can't remember now but it was tiny it was a tiny little tiny little pup like that really small literally about that size just a quarter of the size of this one here and um, over the years it has grown large as you can see now it was just one plant and then it sort of developed this strange brown crispiness on the top and um, I had to cut the top of it off and then it pupped all around the top of it and it was looking pretty good up until recently. Now I noticed it actually yesterday, this plant was actually on the windowsill in our plant room and because there's another plant in front of it, this was in front of the window, all I could really see was these two and it always looked pretty healthy. And then as I was looking over the window yesterday, I thought, oh gosh, that's not looking that good. I got it out and... Um, as you can see, it's soft there and uh, brown and it looks like it's rotting. Um, now, I've kept this plant completely dry all through the winter. So it has not been watered and um, it is kept in the windowsill um, where it gets plenty of sunshine and um, also extra lights from also light from the grow lights coming across as well. So it gets plenty of light and um, as I say, I'm not sure what on earth is wrong with this poor plant, but it doesn't look good. So I'm going to share with you actually taking it out of the pot because I don't know what to expect and what I'm going to do to save this plant. But I will do my best. Now, it's, we actually repotted this plant not long before we moved house. And I think what possibly could have happened is, although I potted it in well-drained um, cactus soil, obviously, um, when we moved house, when we were waiting for our polytunnel to arrive, and before we was able to put any plants even away in the window seals in the house, um, we had to have them all outside because um, we was in the middle of unpacking and we got caught, in, they all got caught in heavy, heavy rain. And um, I think this may have got wet too late in the year, I'm not quite sure. But anyway, it seems to be rotting. So we'll see what's what's wrong. I say sometimes it's, it's just one of them things you do everything right. Take the little tiny crystal. This is such a tiny crystal that um, I actually found here in Ireland when I was walking the mountains. It was actually on the west coast of Ireland. Um, in Sligo, um, Sligo County on the west coast and it was up a little tiny little mountain where we found that. I couldn't believe it's just lying on the path when I was walking up. Isn't it gorgeous? So um, I like to put crystals around the plants and um, this one here obviously. Now I'm going to check out what I, I don't know what on earth I'm going to expect. I'm going to get it out of its pot first of all, squeeze it out and um, see what's going on with this guy. Now first glance the roots seem pretty The soil is completely bone dry, so it's not damp soil or anything like that. But um, what I'm going to try and possibly do is obviously for me to see what's wrong, I'm going to have to remove all of the soil and just see if I can save this plant. Now, feeling this around here um, feels pretty firm. In other words, it doesn't feel like the rest of the plant is rotting. Now, I just want to show you what's normal and what's not normal. This is normal to have on Lophophora around the side here. They do, with a lot of cacti, obviously, when they do grow, they do go scabby at the base. And it's normal for, Lophophoras tend to be prone to a bit of this orange scarring. Now, it's different to rot. As you know, this is completely hard. But it's sometimes, they sometimes have a little bit of an orange scarring, um, like a tan colour scar on them. They just, it's something to do, I think, with the, their alkaloids in their skin. So if you have this, don't worry, it doesn't mean you say your plant is rotting, mean, that, that's firm enough. And as you say, see there, squeeze out, that's hard. But this is the bit that's soft, so this is what's worrying me here. So um, obviously just teasing away all the soil. 
And now I'm going to try and separate this plant somehow because this is obviously a cluster. Now the big main plant, as I say, was one big head that um, I had to cut off because I also went sort of scabby at the top and I had to cut it and it popped out. Um, now this does feel soft here so I'm not happy about that. It's not looking good and I don't know why it's happening. So obviously I'm going to, oh look at that, rot. There you go guys. Oh, it's rotted through. Um, that's completely gone. I mean, look at that. That's rotted. Um, but I don't know if I can save any of these pups on the side. I'm hoping I can. But um, that's completely rotted, as you can see there. I might... Yeah, that's gone. Um, that is not that soft. See, I just want to show you what rot looks like, guys, so you know what you're dealing with should you have this on your plants. Um, you can see that's completely soft rot. Um, gently tease these away now. Oh, now that looks sort of fresh under there. These are actually all sort of separate plants. Now I might be able to be lucky here. In the sense, there you go. Now, I just want to smell that rot if it's definitely... Um... The good news is, guys, I think I might be able to save these if I can do a cut on that. So this one is going separate, keeping that there. And this one, as I say, you can see there's the, the rot sort of around here. But I should be able to make a... Um, Pretty much cut that rot out. Now that's the actual tap root. You see, love a four or form a tap root. And what I'm hoping to do here is they're not always easy to propagate from the buttons when they're cut, but if I can keep as much of the tap root there as possible, that will callus over and it should pretty much regenerate itself again. Love a four is good like that. Um, but obviously I need to make sure cut cut all the rot out. So I'm just gonna put these two aside here and obviously dispose of these and um, then I'm going to show you um, carry on afterwards and I'll show you what I'm going to do to try and save these two here now obviously I've thrown all the all the rotten parts away now these two I'm going to try and see what I can save and remove as much as the rot as possible now obviously when it comes to um, removing rot you have to make sure as you can see here all the orange bit is completely taken away so that's the clean tissue that's the bit that's rotting and um, what I'm probably going to do is take this high up there and um, see if I can repropagate this now obviously when it comes to using um, a, knives and things like that <clears throat> make sure that it's completely clean and um, I like to actually sterilize it with the old um, isopropyl alcohol <laughs> which I find is great for everything even removing bugs and um, all you want to do then is obviously just dab it on to clean the knife because this is important because and obviously you need to make sure you use clean absolutely clean the knife with clean tissue bed every time with every new slice of cut it is so important and um, as you can see there there's rot there and it's obviously all here um, not good so I'm going to take this up really as high as I can here now um, that's there I'm going to slice this across here I think this is actually sort of healthy-ish but I'm not going to know till I cut into it um, well there you go um, so far so good very good news so it looks like that's the only part there that was actually rotten because as you can see that's all fresh growth there it's still worth them to have a bit of the brown coloration again I'm just going to cut away at that other side on there and as I say more clean and with a new piece of um, cotton wool you want to make sure it's completely clean again wiping the knife sterilized it because if there's obviously rot and the other part there and then you go to cut a new clean piece you can spread it and obviously the old um throw the old uh, pieces away now it's just that corner there i think so mm. still quite a bit of rot there i'm doing a little bit more of a cut in just gonna see how far it is now it is as i say normal for the orange to be on there um I'm just going to check whether it's worth taking this. Ah, that's the good news. That's all hard and firm there. So that looks pretty good. And very good news, actually. I think I'm going to be able to save this plant, or at least at least this one in anyway, which is great. As I say, they're, they're like tubers, um, how they grow. They have a, a big tap root, and uh, that's the good news. That is probably just a bit of the orange anyway that it has all around the plant there. Now I'm just going to... Um, 
double check that that's all okay it's pretty much okay I'm just a bit uncertain as I say I want to make sure there's no signs of any orange at all that could be possibly be rot I don't think that is but I'm not taking any chances I'm going to cut again as I say again fresh uh, with the again with a fresh fresh cotton wool pad this is just how I like to sterilize a knife you have your own method some people like to use candle flick it through a candle um, candle wick now as I say it's just that one side on there and uh, the only reason why I'm not using a scalpel because I know that would be far more professional is I'm, I'm scared of scalpels guys I know it's silly but I'm scared of them um, now I think that's pretty much okay that's it that's it gone look at that guys all clean I'm so pleased so um, I think this is going to be safe and uh, I say it's got a great big root coming out there as well I'm going to let that callus over and I'm pretty sure that that will be able to be potted up again and treated as a little individual diffuser so fingers crossed guys that one's going to be okay I'm happy about that now there's this fella here now as I say I'm going to move as much as I can first before trying it with the knife to see how far gone this is this is quite bad actually this is completely gone as you can see I don't think there's anything to be saved out of this one nope it is really not good but at least I've got the one, which is great news. Um, so now there's a the roots on there. Nope. Hmm. Difficult to say if this can be saved or not. It is quite, um, quite a bad way. <laughs> but uh, let me just check. I'm just going to take as much as I can away with my fingers first before using the knife. And... Uh, Making sure that any of the this is coming away very easily. I think this one may actually be saved. Um, I think I might be lucky. This is just the part of the skin. As I say, it's normal for it to form a, a dry brown skin around the edges there. That is normal with lofts. A lot of my ones, I've, I've old ones, I've had that too. This one I think is going to be okay. Now, whether, see, that's part of the of the um, tap root there with the roots. Now, that's obviously, I'm hoping it will callus over. Now, what I'm going to do here. I don't need to use a knife on it, but what I do need to do is completely um, make sure, is make sure that there's no, um, see that it looks a little bit orangey there, so I'm probably going to cut that bit out. I'm going to actually sterilise it with the alcohol over the whole of the bottom of the base of it, so there's no chance of any rot surviving there. So um, what I'm going to do now is obviously another cotton, cotton bud, and then obviously, again, Sterilising the knife so it's all clean. And then, and I say you don't necessarily have to be sterilised. Like I just like to do everything I can to minimise any chances of it. I just don't want to take any risk with it, with this. Um, I think that's going to be okay there. It's difficult to say. Um, yep, that's it. And um, what I'm going to do then is I'm going to actually dip the whole of this plant in the alcohol from the, the roots because it will help to minimise any chances of any rot, um, spores, or I don't know what you'd really call them, really what rot spores, but um, any type of traces of the rot that could stretch on and say so only time is going to see how this plant is going to do. I think this other one definitely going to make a recovery anyway, so I think I've got... I've saved that one, which is most important. Just want to make sure that's uh, cut away there and see how it goes. Now, what I'm going to do now is, as I say, get a little bowl, like so, and pour a little bit of the alcohol in there. And uh, I love using this isopel alcohol. It's great for everything. I think it's brilliant for sterilising knives, using it on bugs. Now, as I say, um, I've removed as much of the rot as I can on there, but I'm just going to literally just dip it in this isn't going to hurt the plant short term i'm not going to soak it in there um it's just, it just means that it's a good antiseptic and uh that's there i'm just going to leave that then to dry on the on the side like so on here take it away make sure it's in a clean place just show you oops I'll show you what i've done there with it there so i'm just going to let the alcohol dry on it and then what i'm going to be doing then is letting these these two here dry upstairs in a shady spot in a warm dry shady spot till they're completely callous callous over and then going to pop them up again and um, put them into new pots so stay tuned for a future video coming probably in a 
about a week's time. I'm gonna leave these out the pot for a week. And then when I do a potting up video of them, I'll show you what I've done there. And that's it. <laughs> so as I say, I can't pot them up because I have to let them callous over. I can make sure I remove them off that, this sterilise this complete tray as well. And um, as I say, I'll do updates on them and uh, stay tuned for future video potting these on and um, wish them luck, guys. <laughs> Save us. <laughs> so guys, thanks so much for watching. And I want to send you loads of love, heaps of happiness and tons and tons of plant power as always from ireland until the next video guys bye